Hey guys, so I got two reviews to do today, so I want to get uh, both of these knocked out of the park very quickly because I got things to do. So I'm going to try to get these done as quick as possible. Um, so let's get started with the first movie, which is Devil's Do. Devil's Do has been a movie that I've talked about uh, a lot over the last couple months. Um, if you see any of my reviews, if you haven't seen any of my reviews, I reiterate what I've said about this movie. Back in October, I got a trailer for this movie, like, uh, with Carrie, I think, yeah. Um, and I thought the trailer looked fine. I was like, okay, we're getting a found footage movie that's basically Rosemary's Baby. Okay, fine, whatever. But then the title for this movie popped up, Devil's Do. I busted up laughing. I was like, that is the dumbest title for a horror movie or any movie in a long time I was like really devils do I, I was like laughing in the middle of the movie theater I couldn't stop laughing uh, even while I was watching Carrie I kept laughing about it uh, and uh, it, I mean it's that, that title is just so stupid and I was like whatever um, and then I also heard it was being directed by uh, the group Radio Silence um, now, I know most people watching this video, probably almost everybody watching this video, are going, Who the fuck are Radio Silence? Let me explain. Radio Silence are like a group of guys who are directors slash musicians, I think. And also, they, uh, have, I think, became popular because of YouTube. Um, they did a short on the movie VHS called 103198. It was the last short on that film. Um, and it was really, really good and stole the movie, in my opinion. It was the saving grace of that movie. Uh, it, it was really, really good. It was like a high house uh, found footage uh, short film. And it, it, it definitely, like I said, saved that movie and made me interested what else these guys could do from here on out. And then I heard, like I said, when I heard they were making this movie, I'm like, alright, maybe this movie will be actually be pretty good. I want to see their first feature-length film. Because this is their first feature-length or feature -length film. And I said, I want to see whether they could do a good job. And uh, going in, like I said, my expectations were, yeah, this movie has a stupid title, but also a lot of title, a lot of great, good movies have really stupid titles. Look at, like, uh, look at movies like Captain Phillips. That is a really stupid title for that movie, in my opinion. Still is, but I still love Captain Phillips. I, the title don't take away from a good movie. As long as the movie's good, you can ignore the title, in my opinion. Um, so, what did I think of it? You know what? I know this movie ain't getting very well received with critics, and everybody's comparing it to Rosemary's Baby a lot. I can, every fucking review I've read, like, oh, this is Rosemary's Baby. Yes, we know. Um, but you know what? I actually enjoyed this flight for the most part. Uh, it was enjoyable. It was entertaining. I, I actually kind of was into it. Uh, the hour had a half this movie, uh, uh, the, 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 this movie's an hour and a half, and honestly, I wasn't bored one bit. It kind of flew by pretty quickly. Um, like I said, I kind of recommend this movie. Uh, the main thing I really loved about this movie, and probably the one key thing I liked, loved about this movie, was uh, the two actors in this movie, Zach Gilford and the girl. I don't know what the girl's name, so I'm sorry. Uh, Zach Gilford's from uh, Friday Night Lights. Uh, he uh, was played Matt Saracen, and I liked always liked the kid. He only movie I've seen him in ever since Matt Friday Night Lights was uh, Last Stand. I liked him in that movie. And I liked him in this movie. I think this guy is a pretty damn good actor and he should be a more flex. Um, and his character and the girl's character, you actually start giving a shit about what happens to them. Honestly, you know, in a lot of movies, horror movies nowadays, especially found footage movies, you always have douchebaggery main characters that you can't stand and you wish would die. And this one is kind of refreshing because you actually have two characters you actually give a shit about. And I like that. Um, you rarely get that anymore in horror films, almost. Uh, and uh, these characters, I mean, they're likable people. I mean, they... I can kind of understand why, for the most part, why he would want to stay with her even when bad shit starts happening. That's always a problem I have with horror films. Um, although... It gets a little questionable towards the end, but 
I'll get in that a little bit later. But uh, I, yeah, I thought uh, he did pretty good, and I think I thought he was believable in the role. The girl was really good, and when she needed to be creepy and freaky, she was pretty good at it. Uh, I particularly liked the scene where he's watching her sleeping and snoring and videotaping her and he has night vision going on. And this movie uses a lot of fucking night vision. Uh, some some good, some bad. I'll go into that a little bit more. But um, he, uh, he he's filming her and he's watching her sn snore and he's like, hey, look. he's Basically, he's filming this whole uh, pregnancy for the... Uh, uh, the kid to watch later on when they're older and he says hey your mom actually snores even though she doesn't snore and then out of the blue she just wakes up with her eyes wide open and like uh oh it's like, and it's kind of freaky and with the night vision it made it even more freakier I liked it it's kind of creepy uh, and there's moments where she's pretty good in the last half of the movie um, she is kind of freaky like looking um she does a pretty good job. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, you got two characters that are really good. I didn't think there was really one bad performance in this flick. Um, the, this movie does rely on CGI, but honestly, the CGI was fine and stuff like that. Nothing really bothered me. Nothing looked too fake looking, which was nice. Which Radio Silence did that with uh, 103198. Where they used a lot of CGI, but it didn't look too bad. Um, so this movie doesn't look too bad. I can understand why they did use CGI. Um, maybe some, I, I, maybe I missed practical effects here and there, but maybe I think most of it was CGI. I'm pretty sure. Um, but I guess we can get into some of the negatives because uh, even though while I say that's one of my main positives, don't, don't take away that I think this movie is a bad movie. And I, it isn't. But the movie has some of the same problems I have with a lot of found footage movies nowadays. Especially like Paranormal Activity, uh, the marked ones, which I didn't mention this. In Paranormal Activity, the marked ones, and a lot of found footage movies, they kind of glance, gloss over why they have this camera in the fucking first place. Why they have to film every fucking thing. Especially in Paranormal Activity, marked ones. I forgot to mention this. In Paranormal Activity, the marked ones, the only reason they have this camera, and they explain it early on, barely, that is because, hey, I got a new camera, let's test it out, let's film everything. There's no fucking reason. That's like the go-to reason for found footage movies nowadays, for having the camera in the first place. And it is kind of annoying. It's fucking lazy. It's starting to get really lazy. This one, I'll give them credit for this. They do address that. Because, like, early on... Um, he, uh, <laughs> uh, he explains that, you know, he wants to film their honeymoon and stuff like that, uh, for, you know, them to watch back when they're older and stuff like that, have stuff to cherish and film, uh, key moments of their lives together. I can understand it because they said that's something that his dad did and he thought that would be a good idea. And then he also when she starts, uh, when she's found out to be pregnant, he starts to film uh, the pregnancy so they could show the child, the child they had later on. Um, towards the end, though, it does get to the point where you're like, yeah, they don't need to fucking have, film any of this. And, like, there's a one point, like, they, they, they get, just to kind of get around that, fact that they really don't need to be filming this they get to the point where they actually have the cult members install cameras hidden cameras to like watch them as uh at a different house uh watch the uh, things unfold in their house and i'm like really i guess that's all i guess they have to find a reason why they have all the, everything's being filmed though so i guess they found it i thought it was kind of a little bit lazy like really you had to use security camera footage now it does that in, like, grocery stores and stuff like that. And I, I guess I give them points for that. Uh, but then, like, some reason they shoot, they, they show these kids in the forest. You've seen this maybe in the trailers, but, uh, they 
randomly cut to these kids in the forest with a camera because that's what kids do. They have cameras in the forest. Why? I don't know. Uh, and I mean, this is kind of nitpicking, but <laughs> and then like yeah, and it just conveniently they're just conveniently there when the uh, woman's there eating a deer. Spoiler alert. Um, yeah, whatever. I was like, what the fuck? I mean, it, it, that's the problem with horror movies, or found footage movies, is like, yeah, you're like, just fucking drop the camera. You probably get around faster if you're not carrying this fucking stupid camera. At least in this one, I'll give him points too. Like, at the end, when he's being chased by these guys or whatever, he has, like, I think... I, I might I might have missed it somewhere, but I think he has like a camera on his button or something like that on his shirt, so he uh venture cam as he called it. And so at least that ain't weighing him down. Um oh, what damn it, I was just thinking about There's also parts of this movie that just kinda like don't uh, get addressed. Like the the one key scene I was just like sitting there like yeah, that's kind of bizarre, and nobody addresses this throughout the rest of the movie. Like, uh, the scene where the little, I think it's Zaf Guilford's niece, is going up to the, uh, play behind seek with another little kid, and, uh, the little girl, or the pregnant woman's, uh, surprise birthday party, which, yeah, that's a great idea. Give a surprise birthday party for a fucking pregnant lady, which she could probably, if you surprise her and scare her enough, she probably will go into fucking labor. What's they fucking do? They surprise her. Like, really? Th that's a stupid idea for a pregnant, like, who's far along where she could probably give, if, go into labor if you surprise and scare her enough. But anyways, that's, no, that's another fucking bitch nitpick, but, this, like I said, this is just the things I've observed, but, like, the part where... Uh, the niece is playing hide and seek with another kid. And she goes up to the nursery, and she, surprise, surprise! The woman standing there and says, "Get out!" Like really freaky and like uh, demonic looking. And you're like, and then the kid runs runs out, uh, runs downstairs. And I'm thinking, huh? and then like later on, it's never addressed or anything. And like that little girl's probably fucking scared to death. She probably wouldn't. You know, just, like, keep quiet about that. She'd be like, Mom! She's fucking flipping out upstairs! I was like, and they don't address that whatsoever. And like, I was like, whatever, I don't know. I was like, the, they could probably just you know, pass it off as hormones. Or, like, the fact that those kids in the woods get that she kills, like, nobody goes to look and see what happened to them. Uh, nobody notices, like, any of the camera footage which I guess she could have took it, but whatever. Uh, I like also that... Um, <laughs> I, I, I The whole time while I was watching this movie, I kind of went, dude, just watch your fucking camera footage that you've been recording the whole time. Because seriously, like, this whole movie could have been fucking solved. Like, he could have figured this out very early on. Probably got an abortion if he really wanted to. I know, I know that's not a popular thing to say, but when your wife is about to give birth to the Antichrist, they're like, alright, you're having a fucking abortion. <laughs> I, I, I'm sort of cult would allow that, but I, I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> but uh, he, uh, I kept going the whole time, I'm like, dude, just go back and watch the footage. Watch the fucking footage that you're recording. Watch the fucking footage. Because it's all recording, like, stuff, freaky stuff happening. And, like, to the point, like, when they're on vacation, what happens is, like, how she becomes pregnant with the Antichrist is that they're in, like, I don't think it's Puerto Rico, it's somewhere, but it's, like, a tropical place. And they get lost, and they find a taxi, and, uh... It's this random black guy who says, oh, you gotta go to this cool place, this cool happening party down in, like, outside of the city or something like that. They're like, all right. They're, at first they're like, eh, I don't know about that. And then they're like, all right, why not? This is the last night. We're in this. And he takes them there. They get them so fucking drunk that they black out. And, and the black uh, cabbie driver is part of the cult and... Basically, they start a ritual where she becomes pregnant. And 
you you while you see this actually this ritual actually happen because the camera is in her purse and it's still on so you see snippets of the ritual and you're just sitting there like the whole time I'm watching this movie I'm like dude just fucking watch the footage watch the footage watch the to the point at the end of it when bad shit's really starting to fucking go down he finally watches that footage and like like, dude, you're a fucking dumbass. Like, I went, God damn it. This whole movie could have been solved if you just fucking watched the footage. And that's what, that's another problem with fucking foul footage movies. I mean, it's just like, you start noticing that in this movie. I mean, I mean, that's that's kind of nitpicking, I know, whatever. Like, this little stuff I'm pointing out just kind of sounds nitpicking. But it's stuff you notice after a while. It did, like, I was like... The one thing, although those those things didn't really bother me too much, like I said, one thing that did kind of bother me was the ending of this movie. Now, this movie, this ending is very anticlimactic, in my opinion. I was like, really? That was it? Like, really? One thing I like about found footage movies is that usually in the last 15, 20 minutes, crazy shit happens. And, you know, like, and it gets really intense sometimes. Uh... Like, movies like Paranormal Activity are a good example. And I'm just sitting there, like, you know, you're building up uh, to this climax and everything else, and then it kind of just ends, and you're like, huh? It's like, <laughs> it's just like, the, the ending happens, and you're like, well, the fuck? I was like, that was kind of anticlimactic. <laughs> and you're like, and then it kind of sets up a sequel, and you're like, oh, I don't think this will get a sequel, but whatever. Uh, because they show at the end a couple in Paris that is coming across the same situation they did in the beginning of this one. Um, a couple in this one did. Uh, I, yeah, I, I was like, it's not like Devil Inside bad of an ending or anything like that. It's not like annoying like the Devil Inside was. But it's like, really? You could have come up with a better climax than that. I, I mean, I don't know. Um, maybe I'm the only one on that. I actually saw a review that said that the ending was kind of anticlimactic. I was like, yeah. And also, fucking goddamn it. If you do not, if you see the trailers, do. Alright. Avoid the tr second trailer for this movie that came out in the theaters like a couple, about a month ago. Because. That fucking trailer spoiled the ending for you. And actually, the beginning of this movie spoiled the ending for you. That kind of pissed me off. Like, dude, you know what's going to fucking happen? Thank you, movie. I didn't... It, I could have literally just walked out in the first t two minutes and I, I would have known what already happened. And guess what? Like, because... I'll tell you, well, the first two minutes, the movie opens with the guy in a police interrogation with blood on his hands and blood all over him saying, I didn't do it. And you're like, you know what the fuck happens? <laughs> Thank you, movie. I don't need to watch the rest of this. That kind of pisses me off when that fucking happens. Um, I want to kind of like be kind of surprised, but nope, because literally it happens the way I expect it to. And I'm like, fuck, God damn it. I was hoping maybe something different would happen, but no, it doesn't. Um, but, yeah, that's... Other than that, I kind of liked this movie. It was... The... The characters in this movie help move this movie along really well. Uh, I liked this movie a lot. I, or, no, I mean, I didn't like it a lot. I, I liked it. I thought it was a pretty good damn flick. Uh, horror flick. It's definitely not the worst thing I've seen. Uh, horror film I've seen in recent years, but, uh, it's pretty, like I said, it's, it's a rental, you go see a, a cheap theater, I don't know if you would say go see it, like, full price or anything, but it's pretty good, uh, it's a pretty dang good flick, I, I definitely would say check it out if you get a chance, like, a cheap theater, or if you guys are bored and want to see a horror movie, and you have seen, already seen everything else, go see it, uh, I'll be back, uh, a little bit with, um, my other review here. <laughs>